Lens flare removal, quick and easy. Here we go. We'll add a black and white filter just so we're not distracted by the color. And we can add a curves layer. Just to help the lens flare really stand out. And if you don't like that, you could also do a brightness contrast layer. But I think I'm fine with the curves layer. All right, we'll make a new layer above our background. Call it DB because this is just dodge and burn. Change it to soft light and you can also fill it with gray if you like. That doesn't really matter. And just with your brush tool, if you paint on this soft light layer with black, turn the flow up to 100%. And you can see what happens. You're going to make things darker if you paint on black on your dodge and burn layer. I prefer to work with my flow down around 10% and below. And for your hardness, I would probably recommend you start with a hardness down at 0%. As you do more, you'll, you'll get a good feel for where you want this hardness to be set. But generally, I almost never want hardness at 100%. So this is one way that you can do it. And you can see we've actually got two different lens flares going here. Each one's got a bit of a unique uh, hexagonal outline around it, six sides. And we're going to do something different for this. Let's put a curves layer above this. Call that one flare removal just to keep track. I'm not sure how I want to do this. I know what I did before. Turn the flow up to 100%. I'm going to use the mouse on this. So we've got one line painted in. Yeah, something's not working the way I expect. Aha! It's because I need to invert my mask. Sorry about that. There we go. Now all I'm looking for is just enough, just enough adjustment to start to see that it's getting where I like it. I want it to be a little bit darker than what I want. All right now, oops. I wanted to fill with the foreground color of black. That's what I want. And hardness about 80% sounds good. Paint with white. So there's one hexagon. There's the other hexagon. Right, grab your paint bucket tool. And you can fill the rest of these with white as well. 
go back to your brush and clean up the rest. And now let's try refining this mask. So that's looking pretty good for what I want here. Let's get rid of that one. So that gives you a pretty quick way of reducing the lens flare. And the rest of this is really going to be up to the person who's actually doing this to eyeball it just use their own visual adjustment to further tweak this now I would go to the manual dodging and burning uh, soft light you can fill it with gray it doesn't matter if you do that or not though and now you'll just paint with black and white with a brush on your soft light layer and the way I work, as I already said, I like to have it below 10%. So right now at this stage, the only thing that's really concerning me is the outlines of the hexagon pattern from the lens flare. And that kind of needs to have a bit of a manual touch to it. So. Do have this line that kind of goes right through the middle of her face. Yeah, I don't want to get rid of this too much because the cheeks should actually have some highlight to them. It's just really hard to see where exactly this outline is. Kind of bit of a horizontal darkness right here that I just don't like. So I think I'm going to paint that out with white. That just looks better to me. So that's the that's the basic idea, the basic technique. At this point though, I don't like the contrast in her face. So 
what I'm going to do. Oops, nope. I want to put the uh, flare removal curves adjustment into a group. And I want to put the layer mask on the group. That way, everything that's in this group will only apply inside of the. Uh, it's only going to apply inside of our flare removal area that we've already defined in the mask there. And I think I'll just go with a levels adjustment here. I want more contrast in her face. If you hold down Alt while you're dragging these sliders, you can see the highlight peaking. That always helps. It's so right about there. That's too bright, but that's where the highlights start to peak. We're at 221. I'm just trying to get her face to look more, more like his face does. Because right here, she looks much darker, and that's because of our adjustments that we've done to get rid of the lens flare. His his eyeballs look a lot darker than her eyeballs do. It's looking a bit better to me. I think I'm going to call that done. Now that we've done that, I want to get rid of it in her hair. So to do that, I just paint with black on the mask for your levels adjustment. And we don't need a real soft brush here, so I'll make the hardness a little higher. And I can turn my flow up a little bit too. So we just want to get rid of the darkness in the hair that we added here. And I'll go to my layer mask. And we'll just paint all around this area here because we don't want anything outside of our face to be affected by our levels adjustment. So I think that's looking pretty good. Now if we turn off our black and white and our curves layer, because these were just helping us to see the lightness problems. Now you can see the color problems that we have. I'll just call these black and white helpers. that's really what they were. So one thing that we can do inside of our group with our adjustments, let's just call this adjustments. Let's add another levels adjustment. And it's pretty clear that we've got a lot of yellow in there. Let's go down to your blue channel and see what we can do to start getting rid of that yellow cast.
Let's see if we change this to color mode. Yeah, that's a lot better. Still a bit of, quite a bit of yellow in there though. I think I'm going to call this is just about where I want it. It's just seems like not quite. Yeah, we're still very yellow in the face. But at uh, normal saturation, it doesn't look that bad. And I think I just want to take it down a little bit on the saturation. And now, we'll just uh, paint away the color that we don't like in her hair. Because I don't like the blue in her hair. And for this, I'd like to go with a low flow as well. Hardness is fine up there at 82. And I'm just going to sample a bit from her hair here. And we'll start painting away all that bluish purple tinge in our hair that I really don't like. And this color paint layer is set to color blending mode, just in case I didn't mention that. It is kind of important. And it's not important that the uh, hair be all one color. Hair is r really not all one color. It just shouldn't be blue in this case. Actually, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between our hair and a scarf right here. But that's all right. This is not really a high detail image. It's just a snapshot that we need to make look a little bit better. All right. I'm still not liking the contrast in her face. I think there needs to be more contrast. But at the same time, his face is not very contrasty. Try curves adjustment here. Yeah, 
And we're going to control click on the levels mask. There we go. And we need to invert that <laughs> mask. So we're getting a bit more contrast there in our face. And get rid of the little extra shadowiness that we ended up with. Longer hair. really bother me at the edge of her face, the top, the forehead. Honestly, at this point, it's looking pretty good. Uh, this is not going to look exactly like the last one that I did, though, because there is no there is no simple one-click fix for this, really. This is more of an artistic interpretation than a science. I mean, there's there's a bit of a science to it. You want to take out the yellow, obviously. You want to make it darker, you want to increase contrast in the face particularly. But I think that'll do it for this video. You could always take it further, obviously, if you had to in your image. But for this, this looks pretty good to me. I'm going to call it done here.